So I'm a co-founder of Mendeley. Um, I'm originally German, but I live and work since five years in London, where I started a company, a project back then, uh, with the name Mendeley. Now, Mendeley has been acquired by the biggest publishing company uh, that is out there, Reed Elsevier, just uh, about two months ago, uh, actually on the 9th of April, which was my 31st birthday. So <laughs> it was a, quite an interesting event. Now, we have this huge, uh, so to say, Elsevier in the room, and I'm going to talk about this Elsevier a little bit later. I first just wanted to talk you through uh, what the idea was that we had when we started with Mendeley and how far we got. And then I'm going to um, talk a little bit about uh, Elsevier and Mendeley and the combination and what we believe we can actually make happen. So Mendeley is really targeting the world of academic research. When we were PhD students, we had hundreds of PhD, uh, um, PDF documents on our hard disks that we needed to read and annotate and make sense of, and there was no real good tool that could help us as PhD students uh, with that functionality. Um, and at the same time, we saw in other industries, more consumer-focused industries, uh, that there was a lot of stuff in, in the area of social happening, right? Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, photo sharing, and so forth. Uh, but nothing was happening in the world of academic research. And academic research, was really slow and it still is really slow, slow moving. At the same time, it is hugely valuable to society. So we thought, okay, what can we do to improve that world of academic research for the better? And that is um, the start of Mendeley. So if you imagine you are a PhD student or researcher or professor, you have hundreds of PDF documents and academic articles that you need to read. Um, what we've built is we've built a desktop application that works across all platforms, plus it has a mobile interface, it has a web interface, and you can drag and drop these PDF documents simply into that application, and Mendeley would then extract the data from these PDF documents, because one of the um, uh, awkward mechanics of the academic industry is that researchers put a lot of effort into writing manuscripts, submitting those manuscripts to publishers, and those publishers put the document then into a PDF document, and the PDF document loses all of the structured data, of the structured information, because the PDF document to a computer is nothing else than an image. Uh, so now we've built algorithms that are able to extract that information from PDF doc documents and build up your personalized library of academic articles fairly automatically. We then have a functionality in there that you can read those PDF doc documents and you can annotate those documents and can make your little highlights and really enrich the data that, um, that you work with. And then obviously, research is inherently social. It's a social activity. You work with your colleagues. You need to digest information with your colleagues. You need to discuss. You need to publish and write with your colleagues. So we've built an, in a functionality that actually allows you to share documents with your colleagues and then collaboratively annotate and highlight documents. And then the last step, besides the individual productivity and the collaboration, is really we aggregate all that in information anonymously in the cloud. So we, uh, we don't say who is reading what, but we say there is a computer science professor at MIT uh, who is reading that article. And if you imagine, right now, Mendeley has about two million, two and a half million users. If you imagine all these little intelligent databases aggregated anonymously in the cloud, we can do amazing things by just looking at people, how people use data, and uh, which publications are being read. We can look into what are the hot topics in biochemistry right now, uh, what is uh, going on in, in computer science, and so forth. This is a screenshot of Mendeley Desktop, just to give you a, a picture of how that actually looks like. It's a very easy to understand, a practical application, very much like iTunes helps you to organize and structure your library of music. And this is a screenshot of uh, the PDF viewer. So it's really a productivity tool that is aimed at making researchers more efficient. We've been doing pretty well um, achieving that uh, or solving people's pain points in academic research. So if you look at a, a snapshot of what people say on Twitter, it's, it's fascinating to see how people feel about what we actually build. 
uh, on the one hand, you might think we're building a reference manager, a tool that helps people to work more efficiently. On the other hand, we touch into the emotions, on the emotions of people who say, um, you know, I love you, Mendeley, or uh, Mendeley is the bomb for academic gangsters looking, at, uh, looking to blow it up, or raw-like, and, and stuff like that. So Men Mendeley has really made a difference to people because besides actually us trying to make uh, researchers more efficient, we really want to help the world of academic science becoming more collaborative and more open. Um, why do we think is this relevant? And this is a kind of conceptual view that I like to show is you have a lot of academic content that is being pu pushed out there from publishers. It's, it's a massive wealth of knowledge that, that, that publishers uh, put into the academic community. On top of that, you have a slightly smaller layer of metadata, which are services that do, for, it, for example, semantic linking between documents. So it's, it's a fairly automated process. But what is missing in the world of academic research is really a layer of social glue. So people are discussing research. This is happening already. People are emailing back and forth those email, those uh, research papers and documents, but there is no tool and no platform that is actually able to capture the social environment that is going on around PDF documents and academic articles. Now what happens if tomorrow that becomes more important? If tomorrow, like in the world of the other, let's say, consumer industries, those, the social glue actually becomes the means to social discovery and consumption of content. Right now, people mix and reuse and, and combine stuff and show it to their friends via those tools like Facebook and Twitter. Now, academic research arguably is, is, is a professional discipline. It's maybe a little bit different, but just to inspire people to think about what is missing in that world of academic research and what should we be thinking about and where are we trying to, to improve this world. So which role do we think does play social in our model? If you look at industry or uh, companies like Amazon and iTunes, they leverage a social graph in order, for example, to drive recommendations. So they say, you know, people who have bought that book also have bought that book. iTunes has a, has a feature called Genius, where basically based on your library, what you're listening to, what you like, you get recommended additional content. It's so easy to, to think about exactly that same for, for, for academics. So what we've built is a tool, um, and we call that Mendeley Suggest, that based on people's libraries, suggests additional co uh, content. So we, it's called collaborative filtering, and you cross-compare libraries, and you, and you say people with a similar li library have added that document in the last week. Maybe it's also interesting for you. Um, and I think, you know, as people are overwhelmed with information in the academic world, you know, that is a very, very powerful tool to actually push the most relevant content in front of those researchers. At the same time, you have a, a, a different way of social discovery, which uh, the best example is, is Facebook, where you discover new stuff based on your friend's more explicit activity and what your friends say and share more explicitly. And again, in Mendeley, very simple feature, uh, we, it's Mendeley Groups, where you can invite your colleagues into a group where you can start discussing on research topics, where you can say, hey, maybe that document is relevant to you because I know you've been looking into that topic for the last two or three weeks. And so, you know, where actually besides the, let's say, implicit uh, recommendations, which are more automated, we have, we have some explicit recommendations, which are driven by actual user behavior. And what that actually then leads to is, uh, and this is a, an overview page for, you know, just say one discipline, which in this case is biological science, where you can then see what are the most popular groups that are, uh, that are around that topic? What are the most interesting papers tagged with that keyword? Who are the people that are active in that field? So basically, again, all that activity is already there, but now for the first time we have a tool and a platform that uh, uh, brings that into the open and creates that transparency around it. Another important point, uh, point about the, the aspect of social and, uh, for example, also social search is uh, you have, the, Facebook has introduced graph search. Uh, on Google you have a feature called social search. So they, people uh, try to enrich um, 
or co companies try to enrich, let's say, user behavior with social context. At the same time, we can see that pure standalone productivity tools, like in this case, for example, Google Reader, um, have declined in usage. And what that means is, in my view, is uh, that it is becoming more and more critical to embrace and master this social proof and people's desire to share in order to succeed. And again, the academic industry, by means of technology and how content is being put out into, the, into that industry, it doesn't cater for that powerful tool. What would it mean if we, besides social, also thought about openness in academic research? What Mendeley allows you as a platform is, again, is this concept that has been, has been there already. If you, if you think about uh, Facebook allowing to embed YouTube videos, what Mendeley allows you to do is, you know, you can use that data and put it anywhere you like. It doesn't need to happen on Mendeley. We want to make it visible and we want to surface it, but you can put it anywhere you like. This is an example of where a professor has a, a blog post and then he embeds a reading list that he curates with Mendeley and then you can see on the lower end uh, there are 11 comments. So the conversation then happens somewhere else and that's all right because what we want to achieve and what we should achieve is you know, bringing that conversation uh, to, uh, to the open and making that show to other people. What that means is it means atomization of content. So you know, we need to be able to break up the pieces of content that are out there and allow for resharing. This is something that I think the publishers at this point in time don't understand. For them, it's, okay, we have a PDF document, we put it out there, and afterwards we don't care or maybe we don't know how to deal with it, and I'll be coming back to that later when we speak about that partnership with Elsevier. We have developed an API an application programming interface which lets people consume that massive amount of data that we are aggregating. So every day we have between 500 and 650,000 new items being added to that huge catalog of Mendeley. Uh, we as a company couldn't possibly uh, extract all the value that is in that academic data, in that massive data, including the social context. So we allow other people to take that data via the API and our commitment is openness. Uh, we license the data uh, uh, that we distribute via API under Creative Commons uh, uh, CC BY license. So you might even be able to um, build a, a commercial application on top of that and say, okay guys, here's the data, build something out of it, do what you like. We believe if we create a, an ecosystem of academic research that lets people to reuse and reshare data, something good will happen. And we can see that this uh, actually has started. So this is an example of where somebody built a, um, a plugin for Microsoft, uh, for Google Chrome, and if you're, for example, on the on an article page of the New York Times, you would click that plugin, and it would deliver, based on Mendeley's catalog, relevant research articles for that uh, New York Times article. So you could actually find out more, let's say, about r hardcore research content on that specific topic. Another example uh, is an application called clank.com, which, which allows users and, and other uh, external non-Mendeley users to create links between scientific articles and assign a value to those articles, uh, to those links. So for example, uh, supports, rejects, uh, builds upon, and so forth. Um, maybe you know that currently citations don't have any value. So if, if somebody cites a paper, you don't just by looking at that citation understand why somebody cites. So whether that is because somebody wants to reject a, a different research result or somebody wants to enhance or support a research result. Now if you imagine that you could build those links between articles assigned values and crowdsource that across two million users, you get a semantically linked and, and by humans curated network of, of links between papers, which is very complementary to the world of citations, which is currently the way uh, impact is measured. But you can also do very, very specific things. Um, this is a, a tool called OpenSNP, OpenSNP. What they do is, um, maybe you've heard that there are tools in, uh, that lets you analyze your personal DNA. 
Based on that result of the analysis, you can then look into Mendeley's research catalog and find out research results that might speak to those an uh, um, results of that analysis. So maybe whether you have uh, uh, you know, certain genes that are uh, at risk of, for, for a certain uh, disease and so forth. So something that really is of relevancy not only for the world of academic research but actually to the broader uh, population and the broader humanity. Now, we believe that we're doing good by, uh, by having this API because we can just see the uptake of API calls to our API and uh, I think well, we are very keen to see how this continues um, from very you know, easy productivity apps to something that is really impactful for people's, uh, people's lives. So to conclude, um, there has been a famous talk from Tim Berners-Lee, Why Opening Access to Research Matters. So all the time we're very conscious of the huge challenges that human society has now, curing cancer, understanding the brain for Alzheimer's, but a lot of the state of knowledge of the human race is sitting in the scientists' computers, so in these individual libraries, um, and is currently not shared, at least not explicitly and not with the wider audience. So we need to get this unlocked so we can tackle those huge problems. And this is what we at Mendeley are focusing on. Thank you.